speaker hasn't arrived yet, we'll do a little presentation of this morning's speakers, and we'll begin with uh, Yaroslav Nasek, uh, who's going to talk about sub-squares approach, thinking about efficient scheme for solving all our areas. Hello, it's, it's very nice to be here. Of the restricted one. 
because by adding uh, equations we just only uh, can make those motion sets more. <coughs> and uh, about uh, the selecting of some equations, we usually select equations that form on the right hand side, uh, on, on the left hand side, a square. So that's why we call it subsquare. And if there's some, let, let us imagine we have some enclosure. And we, if we take some subsquare and compute its enclosure, it can possibly shape our current enclosure very rapidly. <coughs> so let's take a look at, at, uh, at the example of these three ideas. <coughs> we have here some randomly generated overturning system, and we would like to take a look at the systems formed by first and second equation and by second and third equation. <coughs> we just notate it like, like here. This for simplicity. If you take a look at the picture, the red one has this solution set and this is the internal hull. The blue one has this solution set with its internal hull. If we intersect those two enclosures, we can see that we can shape the current enclosure very rapidly. We get like this. So it's much more smaller compared to both blue and uh, red are. <coughs> so now we get we, we've come to some simple scheme for algorithms. Just select some Subsquares or square subsystems, then solve them and get together a solution. <coughs> and any method using this scheme you will call subsquare method. This is just a general scheme, and if you would like to derive a simple algorithm, it's not more complex, it's basically nearly the same. We just start with some unbounded enclosure, and then why not or why not some why some terminal condition is not satisfied. We choose more and more random systems and solve them, and in each iteration, we uh, hopefully improve the current enclosure. <coughs> that is that is really simple. <coughs> but we can we can get close to the interval hull if we if we select many subsquares or 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 all. Here in this table, there is a comparison of width and volumes created by interval, interval enclosure uh, resulted from the subsquare method and uh, interval computed by linear program. Just for comparison, we took a uh, very vital system method. Average ratios from many iterations. We can see it in the first column. The ratio tends to be tends to be one. <coughs> Actually, if you want to select many or all systems, they are m over the number of them is m over m, which is a pretty large number. But for some systems, it's it's not too many. For a nearly square. Systems or for noodle like systems, the number is possibly not, not too high. Moreover, <coughs> we can reveal unsolvability using this, this technique. If in this intersection some empty set occurs, Here we can see the, num the average number of steps needed to, to reveal the unsolvability of system. We can see that the smaller the radius of the interval coefficient is, the, uh, 
the better the algorithm works or the number of very steps are needed. And it works quite fine even for quite large systems. Okay, now, now we have something, some, some way to solve. <coughs> we would like to make it a little bit better. <clears throat> when we take the square subsystems randomly, they, they usually overlap. And we can think of this overlap as uh, some meeting point of some systems, some set of systems. And uh, when we compute over one system, maybe some iterative computation, we can use it just to propagate uh, just computed information to another computation over a different system. And when we are talking about propagation, just computed result, we can, uh, our mind can easily come to the outside iteration. Which is just here. <coughs> the iterative method, the outside iteration is, usually takes some initial enclosure, we can take this enclosure of some soft square or we can take uh, an input of some different algorithm and in k step we provide the k goes side iteration for all the systems and you use the, the, the newly computed information to it. Of course we are talking about graphic methods, we usually use some preconditioning, here we use just some simple preconditioning to endpoint system. There's a question how to select the soft squares. We would like to develop some algorithm that is simple, but that uh, has some favorable properties in, in spite of some bad one of, of the simple algorithm. First, we don't want to solve too many soft squares. Second, it would be favorable for us to cover the whole or determined system because some equation can hold some necessary information. You would like to take some ideal overlap because if it's too low, it has no sense for propagation. If it's too high, then there is no sense of this overlap. And four, uh, you would like to take in advance some squares that uh, shape the resulting enclosure as much as possible. <clears throat> About the solution to these ideas, uh, one and two can be solved by covering the system deterministically using some overlap parameter. About three and four, it's not, uh, not so easy. We believe three, or the ideal overlap, is it's an open question. We just took n and all three, and the experiment, the experiment which proved itself to be quite good. Uh, about four, that is even more difficult question to be answered, and we, we took randomness, use the randomness. <coughs> so, about this selective algorithm, we just divided the equations of the overdetermined system into two sets, by covered and, and waiting, and in each iteration we just, uh, in first iteration we took n equations from covered, and in the next iteration we just took n minus overlap equations from waiting, and we added overlap equations from covered, just to form a square system. And we did it until the waiting set is also <coughs> just made some two algorithms, the simple one and the sequential one. A little bit more complex, but still, still simple. Now it's time to look, uh, time to look uh, how, it, how it works. Same thing we have one more. In the 
this table for, for each system size, uh, we generated, uh, generated hundreds of uh, random overturning systems. And for each system, we uh, chose many <coughs> coverage sets. So in these two columns, there is a, for a, and I forgot to mention, we use the method verify the system from inflap 6 just to provide an input for, for our method. Because, as I was talking about here, uh, verify the system is quite a uh, quite universal method for solving over determined systems. Uh, it actually works really fine with some small intervals, but when the, the intervals became larger, then it can have some problems. And that's why we, we chose the <coughs> <these> large intervals. <coughs> uh, in, the, in this column, we can see the average improvement that our method uh, made on uh, when it follows the same culture. And in this column, from each coverage set, the best one was taken, and this is the average of all hundreds of systems. We can see that if we are lucky, the, the shaving can be really significant. Of course, if you take a look at times, our method is much slower, but actually it solves a little bit different, different problem. Because it tries to shape the currents as, as much as possible. <clears throat> Actually, we just here we just took random systems. And if we take the systems where the mid, its midpoint is solvable because of this preconditioning with the midpoint system, we can improve the enclosure much more. <clears throat> okay, we, we gave here some simple ideas of two algorithms or some general scheme to use for deriving uh, algorithms for using over for solving overturning and determining systems. The simple one was pretty simple but it did not work. The second one was a little bit more complex but still simple. Uh, and we believe they can be used, for example, in some early stage of some linear CSP solver just to uh, make some initial guess of some solution, or they can be used in some final stage for really shaving the current enclosure as much as possible. <coughs> the advantage is that both methods can take unsolvability, and which is also plus uh, in compared uh, to other algorithms and both methods can be easily parallelized. The simple method is kind of obvious and if you take a second method it provides some more work but it, it also, also can be parallelized. However, there are some open problems like which systems to choose or how to set the parameter overlap or Maybe we believe there is a way of um, making making it par uh, run uh, effectively in parallel, like uh, on GPUs. Uh, similar to Okay, that, that's all for me. Thank you very much for your attention.
uh, your go setup method. So you take a subsquare system uh -huh. and you, then you apply some kind of go setup convection. Mm -hmm. Yes. So why you don't do it on the whole system? Because <coughs> you, the go setup method is equivalent to a forward backward propagation. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you can easily do it on the whole rectangular system. <coughs> Uh, that is that is why mm. this this idea was like well, the, the first idea I was working was to aim it for like parallelization to solve like to use the information that square systems can be solved efficiently and uh, just distribute it over many uh, maybe CPUs and use the uh, the connection of these systems to produce some information. Uh, it was only just precondition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's because of the precondition. Yeah, the precondition mm -hmm. made it more. But you can also precondition uh, all your rectangular system. Oh. Of course, you take a subsquare, you precondition with respect to the subsquare, and then you precondition the, all the rectangular system, and then you could apply the whole single method, and you will be <coughs> efficient. Uh, I don't know. But then is it then the same? But, but the problem is when you precondition, I think the whole recommend system, there's much more in, uh, much more operations, so it, the, the enclosure file is much more big. Okay. And it's because of the precondition. Other questions or comments? No? Speaker.